YouTube, Petey Two Finger here. Quick story for you. We're coming back from a family hangout day today, celebrating my kid's birthday. And I need to grab a cardboard box. So, me and Deep swing by this resale store dumpster. It's kind of a fancy, or some would say hoity toity, resale store. And they don't have a real lot of hardware. It's mostly clothes and jewelry. So they throw away a lot of that stuff. Uh, we've gotten... We got two goose down king size comforters in the packaging. Like new, like a white goose down comforter. Brand new. You think, oh, you get that from a dumpster? It was in the package. It's beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. I sleep on it every night. We're using that right now. Goose down comforter. You know how much that costs? So I'm not going to turn my nose up at this dumpster. We, you know, the resale store, store is called Second Chance. We call that dumpster Third Chance. And I've gotten a lot of really interesting stuff out of it. So today I swing by there and there was a mattress pad. And I thought, you know what, I'm going to grab that because I... Uh, collect blankets and whatever to sit on and they get stained they get nasty for me sitting on them so I throw them out and grab whatever so I thought well I could cut that up into pieces and have a pad for me for my ass to sit on and replace that because they get spilled on and they just get nasty for me so I, so I cut the frill off of that that had a mattress pad had a big frill thing on it I grabbed that mattress pad, removed that frill today, cut that off in the bathroom. And then I had found a bowling bag. Now, I had just built this powered mixer. It's got a box with a mixer on top of it. So I'm looking for a bag. The case would be about the size of a grocery bag, maybe reduced two-thirds high or half high grocery bag, like that size. So thinking of, like, maybe finding a typewriter case or some kind of an old Naga hide, like heavier-duty, nice, something old zipper case to keep this mixer in for when we transport it from home to the remote uh, remote jam site. So I find this bowling ball, uh, it's a bowling bag and it's got the ball and there's these two shoes. I pull the shoes out and they're like really old, like I've never seen bowling shoes like this. They were real thin and like black. And they look like they really hurt your feet. So I threw those out, emptied, chucked the ball out of it upside down, and then took those two items home. Now, it was covered in dog hair, which I used a brush to remove that. And then I used that frilly part of the mattress pad. I would cut that into rags. And I was just throwing 70% alcohol in the bag, and this black stuff was coming off of it. Well, almost like the naga hide or whatever they used off-gassed some kind of a chemical. I mean, it was, it was like sticky, like gloop, I call it. So we de-glooped it, and what was coming off was black on the rag. And then the bag looked brand new. It looked fantastic. The zippers are like a lead-type metal, some kind of weird alloy. All of the zippers function flawlessly. Now, at the base of this bag, it has a cup to hold the ball, so I pulled those rivets, ripped those rivets out of there, removed that cup, and then there was the two shoe holder where you drop the shoes in there. So I cut that out with some scissors and put a foam piece on the bottom, drop the mixer in. Then there was a pouch and I threw this three speaker cables, one for the right speaker, one for the left, and then one for the sub. They're like eight foot cables. Threw all three of those in that pouch and they fit perfectly. And then the mixer pop, drop that in on that foam piece. And I had a foam on the right and the left to kind of just snug it up and then double zippers up and it's perfect this is beautiful this bag could you would you get the bag would you mind so uh, through this process I'm just completely gassed out I couldn't be happier uh, with this bag because I thought I was gonna end up paying five bucks at a Goodwill to find something like this maybe even more As you can see here's the bag it's it's, it's stunning and it doesn't look, it looks brand new because we've cleaned it and polished it. It feels great. It's got metal, uh, metal wire th through the handles 
that the leather had eroded. But uh, yeah, here I'll show you. I'll open it up. This zippers still work wonderfully. And then I'll just pop this open here so you can see the mixer inside. And then there's that pouch for the cables. So as we're going through this process of cleaning this thing up, uh, you know, it took it took a good 20 minutes, and there was this uh, tag here, which now has my name and address on it. I asked my wife. I said, "Hey, why don't you just cut out what was in there?" and replace it with our name and address. And I knew that she was gonna take what was in there and Google that person because that's just how we are. And look who it is. Yep, the owner of the Chicago White Sox, Charles A. Koniski. So she, uh, the, their address is on here. I'm not gonna show that. We looked up, the, uh, she looks up the address, it's a $1.2 million mansion in a town that's just down the road. So, I didn't know, I was, you know what? I'm going to take all of that back because I'm remembering now, when I worked for Beleza, I worked there. Really? I worked there. Well, yeah. okay. Now, the address that comes up when you Google him is not that address. You know, like it comes up that he owned that house, but another, ad you know, so I don't know which one it was. There was another address on 8th Street that they tore that house down. A yeah, house well. And the, rebuilt it in 2012. The, so that place, might have been the place that I worked at wasn't on that street. Okay. The CL Street wasn't on there. So maybe it was the one on 8th Street or something. And it was like dark. It was like recessed and it had like trees near the front and now you can see it's a big mansion because they I'm sorry I got a mosquito bite that's yeah. uh, really nasty on my legs so I was just applying some alcohol to that mosquito bite so yeah the, the mystery of the houses and all that I, you know, I, I it just came back to me that I, I worked I did some concrete laboring um, on that on um, Charles Comiskey's property years ago in like 1988 for like three days I was on that property working for a guy named Beleza a little Italian guy who was out of his mind anyway uh, yeah that's my Charles A. Comiskey Comiskey Park bowling bag story I just thought that was kind of neat and I wanted to share that with you guys Anyway, I'm going to cut you loose, and we'll see you soon. We're going to be doing some remote jam, some more music, so look for that. Videos with this puppy's going to be in it, the powered mixer. Look forward to that, and once again, thank you so much, and peace.